And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to The Journey Home by Cryon and Lee Carroll. This is episode six, and we're going to be finishing up our podcast today, hopefully. Uh, we're going to be starting at chapter 11, and uh, with me today, as usual, is our co-host, Raisa. Raisa, say hello. Hello. All right, then. We, uh, if you followed along... Um, Chapter 10 and chapter 11 kind of bleed over on each other. So there is, uh, we're going to just start at chapter 11 and uh, Rais is going to give us an overview of where we left off and uh, where it brings us up into chapter 11. So Rais, uh, at your convenience, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so uh, we, we talked about actually almost a half of chapter 11 last time. Uh, it was a battle of the it with Mike when they finally met face to face. Uh, Mike realized that this whole time his, he has been prepared uh, for this battle. That's what he was um, taught uh, how to use the tools in order to uh, combat, <laughs> to, um, to win the I want to say the game between um, the two polarities uh, to be basically in the middle of um, the one, like they call it, with love and the one you without love and being in the middle, making a decision of which side you're going to choose. When he met that side um, without love, it took him a while to figure it out because it pretended to be someone else because it likes to metamorphosize <laughs> and so um but because he was taught to be aware cognizant uh he recognized nuances that that could couldn't be it <laughs> but it was it the other it <laughs> so, uh, not, not uh, the for not the first it the second it <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> the, the capital IT. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, then with memory, remembrance of what he was taught how to battle, uh, he used the armor of God, his truth. And those aspects of those angels that were integrated within him or maybe remembered within his own DNA, uh, to strengthen his own self, being present in the now, uh, collecting self in order to stay true to yourself. Sometimes staying true to yourself requires an inner battle. When uh, the old one wants to go the secure way, the usual way, but the new you says, you know what, I'm going to be true to myself and I'm not going to pretend anymore. So then there is a battle. You know the battle between your true self and your not so true self uh, presents itself a lot. But w as soon as you want to awaken, it becomes brighter and brighter. And sooner or later, you're going to have to have it. <laughs> and there we go. He won. Yay! <laughs> you want to Congratulate, Mikey. <laughs> Yay, Mikey. What's next? And so he sat down and he goes, and the next battle, Mike inquired of Orange. And Orange said, will be won the same way, Michael, but without the tangible appearance of the weapons. Truth lives within you now, as well as the power of knowledge and wisdom. There is no beast that can ever take them away. So there we go. When it's non-tangible, which is the truth within you, in the now, um, with the power of knowledge and wisdom. I mean, we hear this over and over again, the same story over and over, just using different words or even the same words, but restructuring the sentence in a different way, right? It's mm -hmm. the same. Uh, as soon as you comprehend what this actually means, you'll know how much power you have within you, especially in the now moment, um, that you are your own savior. And 
Now, Michael considered Orange's words, then he invoked another angel. Green, have I shifted again? <laughs> yes, Michael. So he's questioning who will it be the next one that he has to battle. And his Green replied, the grandest angel of them all, Michael, you shall see. And he was, um, he's getting ready, right? Uh, he's looking at the map. And he um, he was disappointed because uh, the tools started disappearing. They integrated within him. Uh, so the blue says it's, you know, the tools are inside you. He says your intuition will be um, every bit as valuable. Because it's like uh, feeding the baby and nurturing the baby. And sooner or later, the baby is going to want to walk and want to grab his or her own food, right? And want to feed him or herself and then talk. The same thing in the beginning, you're being nurtured in the way that um, you, you've been taught and then given tools. And then when you grow, these tools will be integrated with a new, AKA DNA upgrade. <laughs> and you will um, be able to uh, live your life uh, to the fullest potential with your fullest potential um, as you move along your own path as you actually build your path it happens simultaneously how you build your path and you tread it and you win your own battles it's like you creating all this you doing it and then you complaining <laughs> right stop thinking like a human hello Kyan. <laughs> So, and then um, he is actually noticing um, the next house, right? Mm -hmm. Which is uh, the golden house. But he did, he did not have to travel very far before the next cottage came into size. But mm -hmm. this one was different. It was not a cottage. It was an enormous mansion. So he got a, he must've got a American Airlines upgrade or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Go ahead. Well, yeah, hence the upgrade, right? That everything is inside you. Mm -hmm. uh, and also he had all the angels appeared to him to reconfirm that he is not alone. Um, so he responded to them. I honor you, my friends. I mean, this is so amazing because he is calling them friends and now he's honoring them when from the very beginning they were honoring him and they were calling him the friend so it's like a two-way street right but it is the perception of when you realize this that you were cared for this whole time right and when all his friends joined it created a rainbow uh -huh. from all the different colors of the angels yeah mm -hmm. um okay and so uh, he stepped inside and stood in absolute amazement of this uh, golden house. Everything was gold, the walls, pillars, and floors, grand decor everywhere. It was breathtaking. There was the smell again, flowers, the fragrance of a thousand lilacs burst on his nostrils, filling him with a wonderful feeling of love. It was truly an amazing sacred place. Then Mike understood the joke immediately. While the other houses in this great land had appeared small on the outside and huge on the inside. This one was huge on the outside, but the inside, although grand indeed, was restricted. There was no labyrinth. Um, there was no choices as to where to turn. The path through the house was simple, elegant, grand, and simple. Um, it kind of reminded me of this, like a human body is, you know, has its own perimeter, but yet there is a whole universe inside a person. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of thought, you know, of this. And he says, the final goal must be indeed inside. This wasn't just a house. It was also a portal, an entrance into heaven itself. It was the door to home. Yeah. So the golden house, if you think about um, a stellar gateway chakra, um, way above your crown, I think many would see it as a golden chakra. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, once it's activated, you'll be able to connect to the cosmos and you feel one with the cosmos and connecting with your higher self, with your God self is just that. And the stellar gateway is right there. It's always with you. I mean, it's linearly maybe above the top of your head, but it is within your energy field as it's yours and it's ready whenever uh, each and every one of us is ready for our own uh, stellar gateway um, activation. Um, what greeted Michael Thomas was never to be forgotten. He stood in a grand chamber of majestic beauty. It was a great hall of worship, or so it seemed. At each glorious window, the outside light was converted into rainbows and spilled into the immense golden floor in pools of undulating color. Uh, so the description of this place is very, very beautiful and absolutely holy. Uh, this is what's uh, building this suspense for Michael to, to feel like there is someone <laughs> like who could that be uh, could that be god <laughs> who is this um and so as he um is finally uh, sensing that it's right there because um he was feeling um he felt childlike and unable to control his emotions. His chest heaved with gratitude and honor and lack of oxygen. Mike's head was starting to hurt. Who was this approaching that carried such power? What entity in the universe represented the God force in such a dramatic manner? Oh, so, so when you get a headache, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, calm down. <laughs> Yeah, because the the frequency of that being was so high comparing to his um, physical him that, oh no, this is wrong to say, right? Well, his perception of him, that um, the margin between those frequencies uh, kind of pressured. And I guess what happened was maybe his third eye and his crown started working much harder than they usually do because like at this point they had no choice mm -hmm. and a lot of times when people exercise the third eye or crown especially in meditation or visual visualization a lot more than usual then their head hurts <laughs> uh, and sometimes it happens also with the um, when another frequency is uh, that is much higher very close to you and um, at you know bottom paragraph of page 202 do you want to read it and it uh, the entity said fear not michael thomas of pure intent you have been expected said the great angel whose torso had dimly come into view as it descended the stairs that voice it was familiar who was it the voice although carrying with it a sacredness of the highest order was quiet and peaceful the entity who was approaching was perhaps the highest of them all Yet the meeting began in quiet manner, unassuming, with a message of reassuring safety. Despite the message, Mike could not adequately use his voice at the moment. He was still too moved to speak, and the seeming assault on his emotional state wasn't getting any better. He continued to watch as he grasped his chest with his hands, covering his heart so that it would not burst out of his body in anticipation of the golden master of love, who was now speaking to him. He didn't want to miss this and hoped he, could, he wouldn't pass out. His sight was beginning to blur. Yeah, wow. Uh, he goes on to describe um, about the uh, appearance and the vibration. It was as if the wings were uh, vibrating at uh, 10,000 butterflies um, feeling, uh, but without the sound. And so, Michael tried uh, not to be afraid. It's very, very difficult once you meet uh, this aspect uh, to not actually, you know, get uncomfortable because of 
uh, such polarities because of um, remembering what you did last week. <laughs> 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 and and at the same time meeting such purity, uh, seeing again the difference, the margin and the frequencies, you're feeling almost like unclean, right? Or less than. And this self-judgment causes to feel shy, guilty, um, uncomfortable. And and so when um, when he's questioning him, do you know me? And he says, yes, of course, I know you. We know each other well. Um, it's amazing how he didn't realize, right? But yet the voice sounded familiar, mm -hmm. right? I, I was like, are you serious? Like, come on, come on. All he cared about is just to see the face. Inst just a little a little bit and he would figure it out. It's like as if it was right there, right? But he just so fo was so focused on seeing the face as if the face would uh, reveal what it means. It's not the face that reveals the being. It is the it's energy that does and um and so he says the vibrational difference between us is so great that we cannot sustain the meeting for long but long enough he says long enough for what mike thought the angel continued uh, the glorious strains of his voice again softened the very molecules in mike's body as they fell on his ears and were absorbed by his internal biology Michael Thomas of Pure Intent, Do You Love God? Again, Mike Sills buzzed. There's the question. That was it. Uh, the cells inside him were telling him, yes, yes, say it. As if his inner was just ready. Um, because sometimes your intuition is saying, you know what? This is it. This is the ultimate. And there's nothing left to hide. There's nowhere to go. This is me. This is who I am, and it is nice to meet you, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, he says, do you wish to view the face of God? <laughs> the one you profess to love, Michael was frozen. What did this mean? What was the revelation? Where was this going? Again, his cells demanded that Mike say yes. He answered automatically and simply, yes, I do. His voice shook this time, and he knew the angel had heard it. And then Michael Thomas of Pure Intent. Behold, I can't, it's so powerful. <laughs> I can't. Oh, my God, I got to take a breath here. Oh, I can't. <laughs> okay, all right, I, I take a breath. I'll do it. <laughs> then Michael Thomas of Pure Intent said the angel as he was starting to move down the stairs. Behold the face of God, the one you have told us that you loved eight times. The shimmering magnificence of the most sacred of all entities closed in on Michael Thomas. Even with the protection bubble he had been given, Mike felt the energy level increase as the entity once again began to emerge from the thick golden fog, moved down the steps of the golden stairway to the level that Mike was on. The entity was so large that part of the fog clung to him as he descended. When he finally stood before Mike, the fog was still gradually clearing around his face, and he again spoke. Get up, Michael. You need to stand for this. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. You know that fog, uh, it, it is almost like a veil. It is not that that angel is carrying the fog. It is the perception that Michael has of the veil because of the programmings, and they slowly, slowly dissipate as you get deprogrammed the veils they just come off and it's this fog uh, it, everything is becoming clearer and clearer right mm -hmm. um and so as he stands up um the face of the great spiritual entity that had descended the stairs in the great golden throne was the face of michael thomas there was no illusion here it belonged to the angel. It was the angel. And the angel was Michael. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Therefore, as you love God, so it is that you love me. The gold one knew Mike wasn't really listening. His mind was still confounded. 
Overwhelming shock filled every cell and Mike was still trying to sort it out. What did this mean? Was it real? The angel continued. Mike sat motionless on the floor, still unable to take it all in. Time for another gift, Michael. The angel's voice continued to be calming and reassuring, sending peace and understanding into Mike's very being. I give you the gift of discernment, Michael, as you listen to my explanation. Go ahead. Yes. Um, yeah, he, he's explaining what this uh, discernment is about, that, um, you know, we've heard this many times, you stand in line to come in uh, onto the earthly plane, uh, you know, the third dimensional one, to experience the variety of the contrast in order to uh, progress faster as a, as a soul. Um, and when you do, there is this contrast of the intuition versus or along with uh, using it along with your logical mind. And a lot of times because of being in the physical and everything is tangible here, uh, logical mind wants to look for explanation all the time. And so uh, he is um, explaining to him, I am your higher self, Michael Thomas, the part of God that resides in you as you walk the planet Earth. This is your last revelation and lesson before you continue to your goal. This is the last hurdle of information for you to absorb. It is the highest and most potent truth for all humanity, the one that is the best hidden and hardest to accept. Um, yes, yeah, so this is the golden house of self-worth and nothing will stop you in your enlightened journey uh, faster than a feeling that you don't deserve it. Meaning, um, if, if you were, um, this is for those, for example, if you were raised in a religious um, household and you were made <laughs> to worship god and if you felt um even if you um you know weren't in a religious religi religious household but you felt that there is this magnificence out there in the sky um that it deserves so much honor so then there's this little you somewhere on the bottom. And, and now can you imagine if you have to reverse it and then accept that which you've been sending somewhere else? This is just, this is overwhelming. Can you imagine all the honor, all the just dear God, you know, please forgive me for my trespasses and because <laughs> i'm all this and you're all this all of a sudden switching it around to i am actually that i am and i deserve to love myself um new affirmations that i've been um, invoking uh with uh during sessions are i surround myself with um abundance of all good that is divine and I deserve to love myself. I am worthy of my own love. How cool is that? Because mm -hmm. it is easier to love another, but self is, love is difficult because of being programmed, being called selfish. Well, I mean, but most 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 orthodox religions, you know, from the day they take the baby and to be baptized. You know, they, they are force fed. You are unclean. You are a sinner. You know, you need to ask forgiveness, you know, get down on your knees and pray to a God outside of yourself. And, you know, that's where the error lies. There is no God outside of yourself. God resides in you. Mm -hmm. So it takes people lifetimes and some people, they never figure it out. So they're caught in the same programming and the same cycle of karma and, lack of self-worth and and this is what he is i mean this is an incredibly traumatic i mean it, although it doesn't seem like it i mean think about it you yeah. are you are the heir to mm -hmm. creation 
you are to sit next to God. You are an aspect of God. And here the churches are telling you, Michael, Michael was awed by it all. He thought back over the past few weeks, the family and contracts he had learned about in the house of Violet, he found amazing. The family revealed to him in the house of Red was astounding. But now the revelations that he, the human Michael Thomas, was actually among the highest angels of all. And the other humans also. Could he really be so grand? And that's the issue. Yes, you are. You were born magnificent and pure. I mean, there's a, you know, speaking of Cryon, I've got two videos that Cryon did on the channel. The first one is Stop Thinking Like a Human. And uh -huh. the, other one, the other one is Stop Thinking Like a Human Part Two. If you haven't listened to those, go listen to them. They're, they're incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get up, Every morning, look in the mirror, say, hey, I was born magnificent and pure. I'm not a sinner. I was never a sinner. So this is, this is phenomenal stuff. And then, you know, the angel says, yes, you are, Michael. Yes, we are. It is now time for you to understand and realize that you deserved to come to earth. You planned to come and actually stood in line. You are honored among entities for what you have done, and you are worthy now to move into the next phase. As you have professed to love God so many times through your journey, so it is, therefore, that you must also love yourself. Go ahead. You know what's amazing also is it is celebrating your humanness. You stand in line right meaning there's got to be something so special to be a human right mm -hmm. to stand in line and then to to actually come again and again and again reincarnate until until you get there then there's something so special about being human because if you listen to any channelings from the beings that are not human <laughs> Uh, all they talk about is how great you know you are uh, but it is this uh, perception that everybody else is greater so like for example Arcturians oh Arcturians oh Pleiadians oh my let's listen to that but what about your own humanness why what about celebrating what about if the whole thing at this point is celebrating and honoring the journey of being a human that that portion of your of your soul's journey your soul is uh, incarnating in many places and it experiences different types of beingnesses being a human it is so special mm -hmm. because this is i don't know if it's the but definitely one of of the fastest ways to escalate to and faster uh just you know jumping timelines uh astral travel i mean free will on the on the plane the, the thing is not every plane has all of that variety mm -hmm. and the fact that you know you got to stand in line <laughs> i don't know it's because they're like are you sure Yes, I am. Okay, go, move forward. You sure? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay, this is it. You sure, right? <laughs> so as soon as you incarnate, you get born, you bah, you cry, right? <laughs> it's like, well, it's too late now. <laughs> You're born now. I want right? to go, go back in. Nope, too late. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they, there you go. Um, celebrate. Celebrate your human, human you. Um, I think when when he was saying stop thinking like a human, he was talking about that programmable um, to the tangible part of you. Right. But yeah. but the, if you actually think um, so many beings that are higher now, even ascended masters, you know how we love them so much and we honor them for their messages. How would they pass these messages? How would they be who they are if they weren't humans? Didn't didn't they experience human incarnations and how many? And both feminine, masculine. They were children. They were parents. They were everything, right? They were um, 
perpetrators, they were victims, they were all of this in order to learn. And now after leaving, you know, the for the final time, the, the physical, um, they're able to continue helping. I mean, this is this is amazing. This journey continues to to honor the human part of existence. It is it it deserves to be honored. It's amazing because not everyone comprehends what it means to be a human. Well, exactly. Plus, plus the fact that you know, as vast as creation is, and you know, all the civilizations and all the other entities out there, what mm -hmm. makes humanity stand out mm -hmm. is that we have the potential to raise our energy to Christ consciousness, and not. And everybody takes that for granted, but it's not true. There are entities out there that do not have that potential within them, and that's why you know you see a lot of talk about some of these you know, darker entities like Draco and stuff like that. There's a lot of entities that are stuck where they're at. You know, they can't raise, they don't have the God potential that humanity has. So, you know, for as backward as a lot of people think humanity is, humanity is one of the few aspects of God that mm -hmm. has the potential to return to God. Mm -hmm. And not everyone else does. So that's what, people need to understand. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it is, it is as if there are these polarities, these variants of what means, what the existence means, you know, the God that likes to explore. So, for example, the entities that you just mentioned, right, that just like there are dimensions, there is first dimension, there is second dimension. Uh, if this dimension is allowed to exist, it, th whatever is complies with that dimension, that's what it's going to have. Mm -hmm. Because if it allows itself to embrace compassion and love, it will no longer be the second dimension. It's mm -hmm. impossible. It will leap into the fifth, but, but then it's got to go through the third and fourth. Yeah, so that's, that's what it is. Um, Maybe there are entities who are just going to be there just like that because it's their, I won't say calling, but it's their existence to not leap higher because they identify with the lower vibrations. Just like lower vibration is allowed to exist because of the contrast. Because how else would you know the highest if you wouldn't know the lowest? Right. And I mean, and there are some entities that don't want to. I mean, they're, they're just perfectly comfortable where they are. And um, I mean, the book that I'm reading, The uh, Prism of Lyra, I mean, mm -hmm. it's just got so many different aspects of races that, you know, just don't want to. I mean, they're, they're, they're very satisfied with being a warring race and, you know, conquering and plundering and stuff like that. So, I mean, even... Neville Goddard said, we, we do not uh, differ from God in quality. We differ in quantity, which means we are an aspect of God. You know, when people go around and say, I'm God, I'm God. And, well, yeah, you're God, but you're an aspect of God. Um, so you've got the same qualities, but not in the quantity that the creator possesses. So we are incredibly special as a race. We're incredibly special as, you know, humanity. And if you spend any time going back into the history, the galactic history of humanity, what we've been through, I mean, it's just, it's fascinating. Yes, even, even so many people thinking that, uh, you know, uh, Lemurian and Atlantean lifetimes were a failure when, if you change your perception, they weren't. It was a matter of transition. Um, if you think of it that way, then... Right, then I, mean, so I mean, there is no failure. I mean, as long as you're going in the right direction, regardless of what happens to you, you know, if it's a setback, you're still going in the right direction. It's, it's, it's a lesson that had to be learned in that specific incarnation. 
And that allows you to move forward into your next and, you know, brighter incarnation. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, if we were to uh, turn it, you know, back to the story. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> the, the cool thing, and I was glad that the Golden picked up on that. <laughs> it's that intelligent. Um, that um, Michael, well, you know, was encouraged to accept the golden one. And he said that Mary, that lady that he met in the hospital when he was playing on her, <laughs> um, that she accepted. And he says, did Mary know about you? You know, meaning he is seeing the golden one as separated from him. Mm -hmm. He he still uh, sees this. He still feels the separation uh, because because then the golden one says Mary knew about her own higher self, Michael. If that's what you mean, oh, what a gentle way of saying. Don't you get it yet? You, right. <laughs> <laughs> Very gentle way. Uh, oh, she and then and then also he was talking about how she was aware that someone was watching and that was him. And at this time, he is just in awe of her that she didn't have all these angels. She didn't have this experience. And how did she figure all this out? You know, that means she might be more, <laughs> I don't know, talented than him, I guess, right? Or intelligent. Um, and so he says, Michael was learning so much and his respect for Mary was soaring even beyond what he had been she knew her intuition told her that her actions were being watched the test is at hand michael thomas the angel was getting down to business what would it be how could this entity with his face and his soul know if the human michael thomas had accepted the reality of his self-worth or not there's only one way and there it is the test is um for um, it is just like in the Bible, right? When um, uh, Jesus was washing the feet of his disciples. Uh, could you accept that, right? Uh, uh, the Peter in you, can it accept that worthy? Could it? Um, because once you do, this is it. And where is, where is that part about washing feet? Okay, um, page 210. As he knelt, the grand angel produced a, uh, a golden bowl from somewhere and held it gently before, his ceremoniously, before him ceremoniously. He looked directly at Mike and spoke loving words to him. In this bowl are figuratively the tears of my joy for you, Michael Thomas. With this, I wish to anoint and wash your feet, for you are worthy of that honor wow oh no <laughs> this godly entity is going to actually touch me this is what exactly what happened to peter right mm -hmm. so the story of the um you know if you think about it figuratively uh the christ did you wants to uh wash the feet of you who is feeling unworthy and feeling like he's the sinner what happens when you feel like a sinner? Oh no, please don't touch me. You're too clean <laughs> for me. Uh, but when you know your value, when he, when like Peter realizes like, oh yes, and also wish this for me and this for me. <laughs> <laughs> <Remember that? laughs> because that's, and he said, no, the feet is just enough. So just come down and sit and be quiet. <laughs> And and there there it is uh, that he accepts it. Michael Thomas of pure intent, you have indeed passed this great test, one of the greatest of all. By, but now I will show you something even greater. Even though you have passed all tests and even though you stand ready to move to the door of home itself, I will now wash your other foot. 
It is my honor to do so and exemplifies the love that God has for you. There is no more test here. There is nothing I gain from this. I do it because I love you. Never forget this moment. Um, you know, the the golden, his crested I am is saying that he's loving him. So your I am is loving you. Can you love you as the I am? This is a test of your human belief. Mm -hmm. We must own the fact that we, as God, deserve to be human. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's, okay, go ahead. I mean, that's just such an important factor. I mean, people, you know, have so s low self-worth and, you know, if they understand they're an aspect of God that deserves everything, you know, like I said, they're, the universe, you know, creation is their birthright. So they must own the fact that they deserve to be part of the human race. Go ahead. Yeah, remember also Violet when, when she said, take off your shoes, right? Mm -hmm. Then he was, he was asking why, and he finally figured it out. Because the human is was, was what was making that place sacred, holy. Mm -hmm. they, so that story that it was presented to him throughout the journey, it, it's not something new. Meaning on your journey, before you have this realization, you will have snippets of the truth along your journey until you actually put all these pieces together. And then you just move back a little bit and then you look at the whole puzzle and you will... The, you know, when, when you see it as pieces, it's like, oh, this feels good. Oh, this is awesome. But when you put it all together, oh, my God, this whole time it was me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Uh, okay. So, again, he is um, directing him to, to where, where to go next and encouraging him to remember that th things are not always as they seem. Okay. Um, uh, Michael Thomas rose up and continues on the steps. He, um, he was thinking about the concept of the it um, and between the id and the golden one, right? The golden one, the one with love, and the id without the love. You know, if you are in the middle, go ahead, pick. And the thing is, you know, everybody's trying to be so enlightened. Imagine picking your golden one every time you have a choice, which is all the time. You always have a choice. There you go. And then remember how many times you didn't. <laughs> now, now see how far you are from that so-called enlightenment state. And yet again, nobody's chasing you to say, you got to get enlightened by tomorrow, 5 p.m. It is your own journey at your own pace. And you will always be presented with the choice until you pass that route to go into the next route until you master all of it to then create your own path. Okay. Mike turned and began to climb the steps. The thick fog hid uh, what was immediately above him and he could only see about 10 golden stairs at a time. He was careful to watch his footing. The last thing he wanted was to fall off the stone. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if it's a movie, right? And it's like you sit and you watch and you cry and all of a sudden the character falls off the chair. <laughs> that would be funny. Mm -hmm. hey, the mild humor immediately made him feel more relaxed. He was aware that he had climbed at least two stories of steps and a landing of some sort was just ahead. What a magnificent throne, he thought. It's really huge and it's his. Finally, he has reached the top of the steps. Michael was not disappointed there next to an enormous or ornate and really, I mean, really <laughs> carved golden chair 
was the door he had planned on viewing for these many weeks. His vision of so long ago now loomed before him within easy reach. It was well lit and the main feature next to the chair. Mike realized that it was not part of the house of self-worth or the structure he was in. It was a portal and therefore had a different dimensional attribute. Oh my God. <laughs> I remember when I first time was um, listening to this. The door had a great deal of writing on it, some of which he could not interpret, but in plain English, he also saw the word home. Mike had waited a long time for this. He had been through a great deal. All right, people. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you ready? What happens when he opens the door to the door to home? <laughs> Would you like for me to tell you what it smells like? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, we'll leave it there and we'll catch up in three weeks in the final version of The Journey Home. <laughs> and I'm just yanking your chain. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, the, he, he faced the door in a ceremonious way. I mean, this is what we do, right? When it's mm -hmm. something so holy, we prepare, we take so many breaths with sweat, you know, the cold feet, and I deserve this <laughs> instead of confident Michael Thomas. I honor the universe for allowing me to do what I'm doing. <laughs> I enter the place I have asked. <laughs> the ceremony completed. Michael Thomas breathed one more giant breath of human air and bravely opened the door marked home. Mike vomited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not cleaning that up. <laughs> Angel in aisle seven, clean up vomit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meaning, is this what awakening smells like? I thought it was a lilacs. <laughs> <laughs> and, that ra and that wraps up chapter 11. Yeah, yeah. And so chapter 12, through the door to home. You want to start reading? Hold his head to the left next to the tray, cried the nurse to the orderly. He's vomiting. The emergency ward was crowded that night as often takes place on a Friday. This time the full moon also complicated things. Is he awake? Asked the neighbor who had accompanied Mike to the ward. The orderly bent down to closely examine Mike's eyes. Yeah, he's coming out of it, the white coat orderly replied. When you can speak to him, don't let him up. He's got a nasty head bump with a few stitches. Don't want them pulled out of place. Go ahead. So he's slowly uh, coming out of it and he's getting so disappointed when he realized that, oh, was it all a joke, but it felt so real. What is real at this point? And, and then he realizes that he wasn't such a victim as he thought it was, that nothing got broken, yeah, that it, it was actually okay. Um, then the nature calls. <laughs> Uh, then he he realizes that oh, wow, it, you know what a contrast when he didn't need to go there and here you know, wow, and so he basically is coming back into the um, the physical body experience. Um, <clears throat> so Mike was washing up when he caught a glimpse of himself in the mirror. Something was different about his face. He drew closer to the mirror, looked into his own eyes for a long time and questioned what he was seeing. He was standing up straight and felt good. Perhaps the three hour rest in the hospital was exactly what he <laughs> Okay, people, don't go to the hospital just to have a rest. <laughs> Mike slowly walked out of the treatment uh, area and was greeted by his neighbor. Thanks, Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mike was at a loss. Please call me Hal. The neighbor was grateful to see uh, Mike up and better. It, it turns out that uh, he actually, that neighbor that he didn't even know his name, the one who helped him out, uh, was waiting there for three hours. I mean, this is amazing. Um, so he drove him home, right? And... Um, he, <laughs> he, this place didn't belong to him. Why would he have ever thought so? Why was it so dark and dingy? 
three hours ago it was his, but now it seemed to belong to a guy from an entirely different world. What was happening? That's exactly, it, it is the change of perception. And three hours, yeah, it could happen even in a twinkling of an eye. It could happen that your perception changes and all of a sudden you say, I deserve better and this is something that I... I no longer want to identify with. And as soon as you do, uh, you basically expand, just like he did here, that, um, for example, he uh, is allowing himself to um, buy something um, better. Uh, he is, um, he's taking a cab to a fine hotel. And, and while he's uh, lying on a bed, he began to wonder about this whole thing that just happened to him. Even though he felt wonderful, um, he knew that he had to find a new job uh, and he could hardly wait to meet people and give him himself, uh, perhaps even start a greater career. He thought of serving people, serving the world, uh, just completely changing his life. Um, and so it kind of slowly uh, making things uh, more more real. He is connecting the dots that maybe this dream wasn't a dream. Maybe actually it was real. What is true? What is not so true? And at the same time, he wanted to cut the cords, the old connections, and to just let go of the old, which he did when he called his old girlfriend that he thought um, that he uh, lost um, the one the one that he grieved in the beginning, uh, in the beginning of the book. And it was a very confident uh, Michael Thomas that wished her all the best and that he just wanted to tell her that he wishes all the best in her future and that everything is well. I mean, he sounded so new to her that she didn't even realize um, what happened um, yet Michael was his new him and Michael felt um, even though he felt odd and something was different um, he was doing things that were not like the old Mike he felt the energy of the moment um, it was it was the new him uh, somebody knocks on the door that's his friend John the one that he worked with and um, he is uh, offering John to go for a dinner. Uh, John sees that Michael definitely changed, but how could it be that this is a completely different person? He says, did you have a near-death experience? And he says, no, John, I guess I had a near-life experience. Um, so after the dinner, he is back in the hotel room uh, and he's again contemplating on what is all this and he is thinking uh, to himself then he remembers that he can actually call on those angels again and he says in the name of spirit I ask that I should be shown what I need to know about the situation I celebrate it even though I do not understand it Mike was silent his eyes closed then everything exploded in a burst of brilliant light I remember um, when Lee um, Carroll channeled Crian uh, many times he would say to pray like, dear spirit in me, show me what I need to know. <laughs> uh, bring to me people uh, on my path that I would recognize. So this prayer is coming up in this book. It's a, it's a very special prayer, by the way, if anybody wants to use it. Um, so there you go. Um, one by one, the he started hearing the voices of the angels. He felt like he was whisked through the portal of dimensionally dim, dimensionality into a place that had been prepared for him and him only. It was the inner sanctum of Michael Thomas's communication with spirit, a place he would return to often in his meditations. He floated there in space, totally aware that he was again in his dream state. Only this state really wasn't a dream, was it? No, it isn't, Michael Thomas. 
the voice of white that might dare to open his eyes. Uh, it's simply another state of altered reality. Which one is the most real to you now, Michael? So it's, uh, it wasn't a dream. What happened? Why am I not in heaven? <laughs> uh, was there a mistake? Um, and there it is. Uh, it was White who spoke next. Perhaps you wish to review your original request, Michael. When Michael said that he wants to be loved, um, when he wants to feel the freedom, the release, it is on this plane that you can do it because of the contrast. It is important to experience the contrast. Otherwise, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know that you want a freedom if you were not in freedom. And this applies to any one of you, whether it is an abusive situation or actually uh, enslavement uh, uh, that some people still experience and there are different types. Freedom is something that people want, even freedom from their own old self. Everyone wants freedom. How do you taste it? Mm, a lot of times you'll cry out for freedom when you're not. And there it is. Um, and freedom feels like home. When you go on meditations and you go travel into the cosmos, what do you notice? That there's more space, that you feel free, um, that no one is telling you to go here or there. You just float wherever you want to go. That's freedom. That's empowerment. Can you have this all the time? Um, can you live like you have freedom all the time? So um, these words that he pronounced from the very beginning uh, on page 224. I want to be loved and around love. I want to feel peaceful in my existence. I don't want concerns and trials from the interactions of those around me. I don't want to worry about money. I want to feel release. I'm tired of being alone. I want to mean something to other entities in the universe. I want to know that I exist for a reason and do my part to be a correct and appropriate part of God's plan. I don't really want to be a human as I have been. I want to be like you. Yep, here we go. And, and so this is it, uh, feeling at home when he says the gifts and tools of your high vibration on the planet will keep you balanced and out of the drama of those around you if you choose. And your biology will give you the release you need. It is now filled with wisdom and knowledge. You are now part of God's plan, Michael, with purpose and responsibility. You create your own reality and there never needs to be a moment of worry again the family surrounds you so you see how much he had to endure what he had to go through um, and even though it was all in the dream he did this mentally uh, because while uh, being with angels while being in every house and battling the it it still was his mind doing it he was still uh, being that Michael that was doing it. So it was real. And after all of this, even though it was compressed within three hours, this is it. And you're home. And Red's voice spoke up. You will never again be a human as you were, Michael. You have been changed forever by your own intent. Right again. Mike could never retreat backwards. He was not the same man. His apartment belonged to an old, pitiful person, and even the clothes would have to be given away. Mike was new. Mm hmm Yeah. And here we go. <clears throat> this is home, Michael Thomas. You are here because you asked to be. It is the place where you belong and can make a difference for the planet. 
each time you asked for uh, is now in place. You are a warrior of the light. Like Mary, your human counterpart, you r resound with the vibration of God. You have slain the giant, accepted the golden one, and have the wisdom of the ages. These words sound familiar. The wisdom of the ages. I, I think I see them very frequently every day. I don't know where. Huh. Right, right? Mm -hmm. You happen to know where we probably see this wisdom of the ages? I do not, but I'll keep an eye out for it. Oh, I know. I think his name is Larry. I think. Yeah, I think yeah. I think Larry, Jerry might be Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe Gary. I think it was Gary. Yeah, Gary. Yeah. Perry, some, something like this. Very yeah. familiar. Sounds very familiar. Yeah. Mike intuitively knew it after some time he again heard them speak as one. Michael Thomas, we give you a new entity designation today. As you walk the path, you are known as Michael Thomas of Pure Intent. You stand today as a graduate, a high vibrating entity who is neither fully human or fully angelic. Instead, you are now Michael the Current. It represents the vibration of the now and is one of the highest compliments we can bestow. Yeah, how, how beautiful, right? From Mikey of Pure Intent, you know, everybody's like, I am Opie, oh my God, I am Opie. Well, dig this, can you be the now? Can you be the Michael now? Um, and um, nothing, nothing will stop Michael the Current from finding a sacred gift that is waiting for him in the sea of humanity around him. His smile is as big as any human being can muster in the absolute knowledge that his quest will be successfully completed. All he has to do is begin it. This is your intention. Once you set an intention, the journey has begun. Uh, but don't mistake your wish for a real intention. Intention means that this is it. You're going for it. Well, intention, it. intention also implies action. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at people that sit around wishing for things all day. I mean, an intent is a wish, you know, put on the track and you're actually going to do something with the intent. You know, you found a focus, you're going to take that focus to the end, and, and that's what he did. Yes, and when, um, when you embrace this, your awareness, your value uh, expands. You actually feel like you deserve more. For example, he was thinking to get a new job, and he's say, thinking big companies need good sales uh, people with integrity. Um, so before, he didn't think that way. And now he all of a sudden he says yeah i deserve this right so uh, there is time in in our lives when we think well this is what i have and i am not gonna you know get in any other position so this is it i gotta stay here i'm lucky at least for what i have what if not w what if there is more uh because as you expand your own world expands and the possibilities are limitless and there's so much out there that you could attract uh, coming your way or even you producing from inside you in order to meet that um, new job or um, new friends or um, just like Michael Thomas, he's so determined uh, to meet um, the one that is reminding him that beautiful red-haired woman um, the energy of Anna Lee will be like a, a beacon in the darkness uh, to his soul so um, when you set an intention of what you want in life and he was going for it all he wanted to do all he wanted love he wanted abundance he wanted respect he wanted a completely new life uh, in the light, love, light, everything. He wanted it all. And uh, when you realize, when you embrace the golden one, 
your higher self as you this is you when you accept you the god self your christed i am you will actually have this revelation that you deserve the best you can look around and you will notice and you can make a list of what's around you that doesn't vibe anymore with a grand you and then it is your choice what you want to do with it and no one can tell you what to do because it is your journey and you are living it Mike, okay. Mike realized that he had been given the gift of a second chance to find a precious one, the love of his life. A contract so potent that it would like a magnet for them both, unable to continue apart on the same planet. Mike is in search of a beautiful red-haired woman with skin like ivory and eyes like emeralds. He doesn't know her earth name, but it doesn't matter. The energy of Anna Lee will be like a beacon in the darkness to his soul. He thought of the unborn children and had fanned his resolve to find this flower of his life. There was electricity in the air that crackled with the energy of spiritual purpose and love, ready to be fulfilled and kept precious. The smell of victory was aromatic. The only scheduled rose in Mike's life was about to be found, admired and loved for its beauty. Its fragrance would be appreciated for a lifetime, held and adored for its perfect beauty and natural elegance. She was out there somewhere, and Mike was going to find her. The angel smiled and knew that Mike would achieve his goal, because Michael Thomas, indeed, was home. Fireworks, and fireworks, fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> end of chapter, end of book. Yay! Yeah. Wow, what a beautiful story. Thank you, Lee Carroll. Thank you, Kryon. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so I think this paragraph speaks for itself. That you set an intention on what you want and you believe in yourself. Um, that's it. Uh, wherever you go, you're home because you are so comfortable with yourself. And uh, creating that physical reality, that perfect physical reality, is uh, in your reach because you know your truth and you know your value yeah and i just want to you know say something too about crying and the carol i mean this book was written almost 25 years ago i think 1997 um i've said this before on the channel that um true wisdom is timeless it is universal I mean, so many books that you read are literally dated. You can read them and it, you know, it just shows a lack of understanding. This book, like I said, 25 years old, it is relevant today as it was 25 years ago, and it'll be relevant as it is 50 years from now. Uh, I recorded it. I don't remember what, one, two years ago. It's got over 100,000 views, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, it makes people cry. It makes people smile. It makes people overjoyed. You know, this is a true story vibrating from the higher dimensions. And, you know, <laughs> Lee Carroll did a beautiful thing, not only writing it, but allowing me to narrate it mm -hmm. and to share it with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, Raisa added a very unique and beautiful aspect to this podcast. Um, she is an incredible empath, channeler, spiritual healer, and uh, if you haven't taken advantage of her services, I suggest that you do. Um, like I said on the website, it is money incredibly well spent. So I want to thank Lee, I want to thank Kryon, and I want to thank my co-host Raisa for sharing this thank journey you. with me. Thank you. I, it, it is actually such an honor. Uh, I, I mean, I wanted to say oh, many, many thanks to Lee, Carol, so much thanks to Kryon because uh, Lee or Kryon, both when they speak a lot, uh, when they speak to the public, this part about the storm, you know, and leaving the baggage. And I remember him talking about it so much. I said, my God, what is it about this book that is so special that he keeps talking about this storm? <laughs> Why is it so important about the storm until 
finally, you know, when you read the book, everything was just, I was in awe. And it, again, yeah, there was a lot of laughter. There was a lot of crying, a lot of revelation and a lot of notion <laughs> too. And, and it's just, in, yeah, it is timeless. It is wisdom. And um, I'm hoping someday that, you know, it will be taught in schools, right? I mean, I can't, I can't imagine that we don't study this in school. There is so much wisdom. There's so much in between the lines. Just the, just the whole empowerment, right? The feeling of empowerment it gives you. And it's written so well um, as a parable that, I mean, people of different age groups, right? And different, um, in it doesn't specify any religion. It doesn't say any of us, right? Uh, anybody in any part of the world would resonate with some part of the book. Yeah, thank you so much. My pleasure. And we want to thank everybody for taking this rather prolonged journey with us. <laughs> Our schedule was uh, sporadic at best, but it's always uh, hard to get two people's schedules synced up. But it was a journey well worth the time and effort. Um, you know, when you listen to it on Rice's channel, please subscribe. Please um, share it with your friends and family. I can't imagine anyone not liking it. Um, and, you know. As always, thanks for giving us a listen. Thank you. And good night. And good night.